What's up, team? Welcome to the Run Like an Athlete podcast, a show for the everyday athlete. You won't find talks with pro athletes here, but what you will find is inspiration from the everyday athlete, the normal people who find joy in competing and challenging themselves just like you. Today's episode is called Coffee with Coach. Once a month, I host an open training conversation with my Delta Performance athletes. We talk about training, about mindset, life, really anything. It's a great way for us to connect and also just to learn from each other. So that's what this episode is all about. Give it a listen, and I hope you enjoy. All right. Well, um, good morning, y'all. I know that we've already been chit-chatting a little bit about running, but um, yeah, how is everybody feeling today? Feeling good? Good. Yeah. We got... Lauren, Marnie, and John here. Hi, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, so what's, what's up, everybody? Usually, before we start this, it's, I guess it's usually Joy. Joy gives us a topic to talk about. And since Joy's running her half this weekend, <laughs> she has no topic for us. <laughs> Go, Joy. Go. <laughs> so I know. Oh, I'm excited. She, poor Joy. She has trained for this half, like, I think like three times because she had signed up for this half in 2019 uh, and it was supposed to happen in 2020 and then the pandemic pushed it back. And so she just was like, all right, I'll just run it a few months later. And then they pushed it back again. And then it finally rescheduled to this year. And we've had a couple training talks and she's been like, what if it gets pushed back again? Oh my God. All right. Oh, I know. She's like, I've literally trained for this three times. I'm so over it. <laughs> so I'm glad that she's finally running it. So when that happens, do you stop training and then start up again? Or do you just continue? Yeah, well, so I've never had that happen to me. <laughs> but what Joy was doing is she was stopping and then um, and then like three months, not stopping training. She was still running and doing Delta and stuff. She just wasn't doing her long mile runs. Um, and so she was, she would start doing her long runs again about three months before the race was supposed to happen. Just because keeping that amount of mileage on her body was, she was like, I can't maintain this all the time, um, which I get. Yeah. So yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. Um, some people can, I mean, you know, some distance runners can do that, run a marathon every weekend, but those are like people who are professionals. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So. so I guess like after you finish, I'll, we'll go with like a half or like a full, like a long distance race. Yeah like what is the a good way to kind of continue after that like I feel like I always say like okay I've worked up to this level of distance I want to kind of somehow somewhat maintain like you know if you're training for a marathon not continue to do like 20 mile runs but yeah you know be comfortable running like 10 or something and then I feel like it always kind of drops so do you have any recommendations for like post long race how to kind of yeah. keep endurance oh yeah yeah so I always suggest after building up to a race like that, taking a little bit of time to go easy on the body. Cause I mean, usually that's the farthest you have ran even in your training. Um, I know some training plans will have you run. If you have enough time, they'll have you run the actual distance of the race before coming back down. But a lot of times, you know, that's the farthest you've ran in a long time, if ever, if it's your first like half or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I always suggest having like a period of like, kind of like a break. Um, and it doesn't have to be a break. So it could be like a recovery week, like what we do for recovery week, where you're going on some easy runs, doing some light mobility, stuff like that. Just give your body a little bit of time to, to be okay with what you just did. My cat is going to be jumping around like crazy, just so that everybody knows. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah so I would suggest coming down a little bit from that mileage that you just did so say a half for example if you ran a half 
and you wanted to kind of maintain that 10 mile that you've been at or training at, take about a week, maybe a week and a half to, to recover a little bit and then come down in um, mileage on your next long run, do something that, do a mileage that you know you can run really well and you wouldn't be sore after. So maybe that's like six miles or five miles and then kind of build back up from there. Cause you know, once you get to a point when you're training in your long runs, those like six miles, five miles, seven miles, that gets to a point where you're like, this is not an easy run, but like, this is manageable. I can handle that. So come back down a little bit and then work back up to say 10 and do 10, a couple of weeks in a row, come back down a little bit, work your way back up to 10. We don't want to, when you're trying to teach your body to run a farther distance, we don't want to go, we're not doing anything but 10 miles. And that's how we're going to get there. Like do 10 miles, come down a little bit, do 10 more miles, come down a little bit to the point where when you go out and run a 10 mile run and you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I am not sore at all. I don't really feel in pain. Like that's how, you know, okay, 10 miles is now my, my like new threshold. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So give yourself a little bit of grace, you know, take your time. Don't push it too crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I think that's funny. Isn't it hard to give yourself grace most of the time? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> I try to do that with myself more and more. I have to remind myself that too. Since I talk to a lot of athletes, you know, high school, adult, all ages, I have to remind myself like, Sonia, what would you tell your athletes right now? <laughs> like yeah. whenever I start getting frustrated with myself, I'm like, what would you say to them right now? You'd probably tell them that you had a hard week, that, you know, it was stressful. You worked out X amount of times, like your body's just tired. And most of the time I'm like, oh, okay, shut up. <laughs> but like, I know you're right, but stop. <laughs> I struggle with figuring out when I'm just being lazy versus when my body is telling me, no, take it easy. Yeah. That's an interesting, that's an interesting concept. I, I personally don't, I don't feel like most people are being lazy ever. I feel like, and again, this is just my personal opinion. I feel like, and maybe, you know, y'all have a different one, but I feel like when people are being quote unquote lazy, there's something else, like something else is causing you to not want to do anything. Are you overwhelmed with work? Are you fighting with your significant other? Um, are you, you know, what else is going on in your life that is making you feel like I just, I just need to sit and just do nothing. Like what, what is causing you to feel that way? Um, I don't think that anybody is necessarily inherently lazy. If you think, if you wake up one morning and you're like, oh, I just want to have a lazy day. Usually there's a reason why you feel that way because your body is super tired because your mind is super tired because, you know, whatever it is, something in your life is overwhelming and making you not be able to move. So that's, that's what I try to remind myself when I have gotten down on my own self about that and been like, oh my God, you just need to go work out. And I'm like, well, hold on, Sonia, like take a beat, take a look at what the week and the month has been like. Has it been really stressful? Am I just like being like, no, I don't feel like it today. Or am I actually like overwhelmed by stuff? That's, that's one way that I try to do that for myself. And, and if I look back at the week and I'm like, okay, everything like is fine. You really haven't done a whole lot. That's when I go, okay, you don't feel like it today. So just go do, go, go do an easy two. And usually that easy two ends up being like an easy four or something else. Um, whereas on a day when, you know, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't really want to work out today. Well, why? And I look back, I'm like, oh, okay, it's been really stressful. Then that's when I'm like, mm, okay, you can, you can maybe do a little yoga or just nothing at all instead. 
Is that even help? Does that help? <laughs> it, it, it is. And then, of course, I'm like, I'm stressed 24 seven. So, uh, hmm. <laughs> Well, Marnie, that, that might, we might need other things to help with that too. A personal assistant. Right. Yeah. Our, our big project at work is going live on June 16th and June 19th. So yeah. after two years of, oh, uh, yeah. That'll be so. a big stress relief, I hope. Or will yeah, more? probably get sick as a dog for two weeks <laughs> right after. <laughs> You're going to have to. You're going to have to be like, look, work. I'm just, I got the Rona. I got COVID. Still. Right. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> That's always used to happen in college. Yeah. Every break, I would just get so sick. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's not a fun way. I didn't have time during class to get sick. That's your body being like, okay, we can now shut down. Yep. Yep. So we'll see. But. Running on all cylinders all the time. That's, that's a, that's a crazy way to live girl. Yeah. I highly recommend to everybody. One of my personal clients is doing this on Monday. She texted me the other day and was like, Hey, uh, I want to take Monday off. Cause we usually meet Mondays. Wednesdays and Thursdays she was like I want to take Monday off and I asked her I was like well are you traveling like what's what's the deal and she goes no I'm just gonna do absolutely nothing on Monday <laughs> and I was like you know good for you okay well <laughs> that's fine I think that we all need days and sometimes a couple days where we just are like you know at work I'm sick I'm not doing it today yeah. doing nothing so I highly recommend that to everybody. <laughs> that scares me to my core. <laughs> Marnie, do it. I've had to do that recently. And I think like the, the takeaway is like, things aren't gonna like crash <laughs> and burn at work. Because right. okay. I'm in a similar spot where it's like project oriented work that you're in, in charge of. And yeah, you feel like you can't take time off. And it's like, well, yeah. it'll, it'll work out or, or just, you know, at least talking with people, it'll work out. Yes. And one day, one day without you is not gonna, I mean, like John said, the world isn't going to come to an end. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. No people. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that are doing a lot of work. So I'm like, yes. the project wouldn't survive, but I'm going like, I don't want to overstress everybody else by not being here and helping them out. Oh, see, but at the same time, I bet if you told them I need a day to do nothing, they would be like, yeah and if they didn't then say i don't care <laughs> right uh yeah had nothing to do with running sorry but no it's important though because because being stressed that level of stress can totally affect your performance when you're going out and running i mean like you said am i lazy or am i just like overwhelmed yeah and it, it can affect so much. It can affect your body. It can make you sick. It can make doing workouts hard. It can make you feel, I mean, it totally, it totally relates. And I think I, I'm, I think in our society, like we, it is glorified to work every day, all day, nonstop. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you burnt out? Like, congrats. That's great. <laughs> that means you've made it like, that's horrible. <laughs> so I think it's, a, I think it's an important topic to talk about. And it does, I mean, it really does affect your yeah. body mindset, the way that you run mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. It can affect your relationships. Like, oh. just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I am like, yay. I worked out four times this week. Yay. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's good. Yeah. Someday, I mean, some weeks, like you're so busy and you only get one in other weeks, it's four and, and you're feeling really good. And just know that even the weeks where you just get one in, Hey, that's better than none. That's true. Very yeah. true. Yeah. So 
So what's next on the horizon, everybody? Does anybody have a race that they're looking at? Does anybody? Oh, Lauren, yeah, tell us. Yeah, yeah my a try. I think I was telling you about it. I'm signing yes. up for a try. I was like on the website right before this about to bite the bullet. I'm so scared. <laughs> it's so much fun. I love them. Yeah, I, love them. I did one. And so like, I really like it. It's just like, it's close. So yeah, I guess, do you have any suggestions on incorporating like multi area workouts into the Delta and yeah. Hey, right. Yeah. May 14th. Yeah. It's, it's, it's here. <laughs> yeah. But it's just uh, a sprint. So like, I'm not like the run will be fine. It's a 5k. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not, I don't love biking, but the bike is 12 and a half miles and I'm not trying to like break any records anywhere. And then I love swimming. So it's 300 meters. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. All doable things. It's just together a lot. Yeah. Back to back to back. Um, honestly, I would treat it like, I mean, like you just said, you're not trying to break any records here. So going out and going out and doing like speed intervals on your bike and things is that's up to you. If you want to do that, I don't think that you necessarily have to. I think the biggest thing for you, since you're kind of just looking to get through it is to just get used to get used to, again, since you've done this before going from a run to the bike, a swim to running, uh, you know, they do the bike. The bike is sorry. The bike is not last. The bike right, is the second. Bike's in the middle and it, this is a flipped try. So you start on the run and end on the swim. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So I would suggest definitely like after, you know, after we do a run with Delta, maybe after a guided run, like go jump on your bike and it doesn't have to be a 12 mile ride but go ride for like 30 minutes and just get used to making that transition. Mm -hmm. um, I would treat, you know, how when we train for long distance running poles and things like that, you go on your long runs on the weekends typically. Mm -hmm. So start treating your weekends, like your long, your long training day where you, you get up, go run again. It doesn't always need to be a 5k. You could go run a mile bike, three miles, swim a hundred meters. And that is your long day. And then the next time you go out the next weekend, maybe you run two miles and then you bike for whatever, 10 or six miles. And then you go swim for a little bit farther. Um, yeah, I don't know. You have, since you're, you're on base. No, you're not on base. Does the base have a, in case y'all didn't know, Lauren's in the military. Um, but uh, do you, base has, they'll have a swimming pool, right? Yeah, we've got a few. Um, so, and that's, yeah, that's the nice thing is like, you know, there's the base gym. So there's stuff there and obviously you can run around base and there's the pool. And then like closer to where I work, there's like the pool that like the swim team uses and stuff. Oh yeah. So that one. Yeah. Yeah, so I would, I mean, start adding some of those longer training days into your running. Um, and even during the week, again, like maybe on a day when you are on base for work, you go on, cause you don't own a bike yet. Do you? Yeah. I'm, so I'm even considering like, I think REI rents out like road bikes. So I'm considering just renting one for the race. Oh yeah. Cause I just don't know if I'll be able to find one that I like in the really short period of time and yeah. yeah well and if you're not really into biking like buying a bike right now mm, yeah. yeah yeah I would definitely on a day when you're in at, on base like before you go home go jump on a stationary bike for a little while I'm assuming that some of the gyms also have the pool in the same area kind of yeah, yeah so go to one of those gyms jump on a stationary bike for you know, 30 minutes and then go swim for 30 minutes. Um, going for time over distance is a great way to start training just because you just need to get used to doing that activity for that extended amount of time. Um, yeah. You could also do that on a day, like on a day when we have a, a, a lifting day, um, like Wednesdays, 
you know, you lift in the morning at home. I think that you definitely have the strength to be able to lift in the morning and then go do some cardio like that in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be a great way to, to add that in for sure. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and I love that it's flipped because I really like swimming and like ending on the run. I mean, it's really difficult because your legs are like jelly when you hop off the bike. So if I can hop in the pool instead, I'm like, this is great. Yeah. Where is the try? Um, it's just south of the springs in Pueblo, Colorado. Okay. So it's like at a, I think it's at a college down there, which is why. So like the swim, even that, like we're in a pool, not like in a lake or reservoir that's going to be really cold. We're just like doing laps of the pool, which is nice. Oh, that'll make that really easy. Not yeah. easy, but. Yeah, but like comfortable for me, like, because yeah. I'm really used to lap swimming. <laughs> yeah. Use those flip turns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah oh that's fun though I have I was very close to signing up for a try in May um and then I signed up for the Austin half instead (laughs) okay well you signed up for another try yeah Yeah, you really sold me on one last year too no Emery brought it up to you and I have to like wait like it's warming up here again so like it's comfortable to swim so I'm going to see how far back I've regressed (laughs) From last summer because I was going like three two three times a week uh, at one ah, point I remember that you were swimming a lot but that sounds cool though like breaking it out into time uh the the distances overall I've never really measured like yeah. swimming like that or I guess biking yeah but that's a that's a good approach mm-hmm. I think I'll try that yeah and that's a great way too to approach your your distance running um when you are uh, adding your miles up, um, or when you're training for a longer race, you should absolutely have runs in there where I don't care about the mileage today. I'm just going to run for 45 minutes straight, nonstop. I don't care how slow I run. I don't care. Like again, my pace, whatever, I'm just going to go run for time. Um, it's a great way to train because your body needs to get used to, Oh, hi, Susan. Hey, Um, your body needs to get used to just moving in this activity, whatever it is for the amount of time, like for a certain amount of time. Um, that's one of the things that I was doing to train for the half, um, was I had two long runs, quote unquote, during the week. Uh, I would go out for a timed run because my goal was to break two hours in the half. Oh, which I didn't by 22 seconds, which is so annoying. And that's forever going to bother me, but it's fine until the next one. Um, but I would go uh, do a timed run and I was building myself up to two hours. So my first time run was a 30 minute run. My second time run was a 45 minute run and then an hour run and then an hour 15. Um, and just getting my body used to running for that amount of time. I didn't ever when I got to an hour and 45 minutes, I wasn't even anywhere close to running 13 miles. But again, your body just needs to get used to trucking and moving for that amount of time. So I would do that. And then I would also do a mileage run where I was going to say, Hey, I am going to go hit nine miles today, no matter what. Again, if I have to walk, whatever it is, because your body just needs to get used to going that distance. And then it also just needs to get used to moving for a certain amount of time. So pairing those together, whether it's with biking or swimming or, or combination of all of them is a great way to get it in. Um, yeah. Hi, Tristan. Oh, I think his sound is not working, but yeah, I highly recommend Susan. You just got done with a run. It looks like hi, Tristan on a bike yeah. right now. Oh my gosh. That's multitasking. Hi. That is wow. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Don't follow my lead. <laughs> it's dangerous. I'm just on a small trail. <laughs> you must have known that we were talking about triathlons. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Yeah, Lauren's gonna run one. Tristan just uh, he just ran one a few months back. It's great. <laughs> Highly it's recommend. Great. 
And I love that. Did you did you sign up, Lauren? Did you pick which one you were doing? Um, I picked. I have. I was like on the website right before I jumped on this call. So now that everyone knows, I have to sign up. So <laughs> yeah, right after this, I will we'll sign hold up. Hold you accountable. Yeah. So is it? What's the distance for it? Is it? It's a sprint. So it's nice. just a five k, twelve and a half mile bike, and a three hundred meter swim. Oh, just. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. When is it? May 14th. It's coming up. Yeah, it's really soon. Is it outdoor swim? I'm sorry if you already asked or answered all these questions. Is it outdoor swim or a pool swim? It's a pool swim. So that makes me feel better. <laughs> and now John has to go sign up for one too. Ooh. Have you done much outdoor swimming? Um, I've done one try <laughs> that was an outdoor swim in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's it. Okay. Oh, um, that's I recommend, cool. uh, practicing that a lot. Practicing what? Uh, outdoor swimming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and if I do another swimming. one, like this one is a pool swim, so it'll be. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because outdoor swimming, you have to deal with like currents and, and the wind and all the elements and stuff. That's that makes it a lot harder. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and you have to swim the entire time. You can't you don't yeah. have the, Grab the, wall. the wall to push <laughs> yeah. off of. Yeah. True. yeah. Oof. Or tread water. Mm hmm. Which that sounds worse, but oh and super. Do you easy. stay in Never. your own lane then? Like does every person in that race get their own lane to or is it everyone uh, yeah it's like so I was telling them it's a flipped try so um with this one you do the run first and the swim last oh and so part of it is like by the end hopefully people have spread out somewhat so we're not all like jumping in the pool at the same time and then also um yeah you just like go up and down a lane and then cross to the next so you go through um you know like six different lanes and yeah, if you like are coming up on someone, you know, you tap them on the foot and they're supposed to let you pass. Oh, <laughs> we'll see interesting. That's it. That, that makes sense why they're doing it that way. If they're, cause that would be that I I've, I've never done a try, but I've been at several and watching everybody like run into the water at the same time. I'm like, Oh, it's that's, that's overwhelming. That, <laughs> like that's a little scary. And that one of, the, um, I think I mentioned I had trained a guy for an ultra not too long ago. He had done a, uh, an Olympic try or no, he had done a, um, yeah, he had done an Olympic try and, and that was the thing he, that he had mentioned when we were talking about it. He was like, I have practiced the swimming so much, but getting in the water at the same time as everybody else. And like people's bodies are like hitting me while I'm trying to swim and stuff. He yeah. was like, I started to have an internal panic attack because I was not prepared for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the thing. Like I, uh, you know, yeah, the other one I ran was, you know, a traditional tri sprint with the swim at the beginning in open water. And like, mm -hmm. I'm, I consider myself a strong swimmer, but it was really, really scary jumping in with everybody in the heat and like, yeah, they'll like kick you in the face, they'll like push you down if you're nearby, <laughs> like not really on purpose, but just like, cause everyone's trying to get going and stuff, so. Yeah. Oh kind of like God. playing water polo, you just have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, so who here has done, well, Tristan just jumped off, but he's done a try. Lauren, you've done a try. Marnie has done a try. Susan, have you done one? No? Okay, I've, Susan, John, Marnie, or uh, I've, Susan. John I've only done sprint tries. Hey, don't, don't move. But I think I've probably done like six. Right. Cool. Nice. That's very I'm not a swimmer. I don't know how to, I would have to train on the like efficient swim strokes. I'd be out there going like this and that <laughs> probably wouldn't be good. I'd like to do a duathlon, bike then run or run the bike. That'd be Or like a relay. You can get someone else to do the swim. Yes. <laughs> yes. My sister-in-law did a sprint. Um, last year and that's what she was looking for because so I was like oh, I'll do the run for you because that's what she doesn't like she's a swimmer mm. um, let's build an efficient team here <laughs> all those reasons that you just described about the entry to the race is what is scares the Jesus out of me mm. 
your anxiety attack on that. I think if I did, well, when I do another like open water swim try, I would just hold back in my heat and like kind of let them go. Even though it like adds time, I don't think it's worth it because I'm not going to win, you know? <laughs> so yeah. um, I always go out to the outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wide. Mm. yeah. Not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because I mean, if you did that, you're chip timed in a try too. So like, you just don't have to cross the little start, right. the chip start thing. Yeah. Let everybody else go do that before you start. Food for thought. Oh, or no. elbow your way up to the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I don't. I'm an elite. <laughs> well, oh. The tries that I've done, you do it in small groups. Mm. Right? So you've got a small group of people. So you're just like, get your mm. way up to the front of your little group. And then oh. nicely. Nicely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sure, Marnie. <laughs> Throwing elbows. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, man. Susan, how far did you run this morning? Eight and a half. Ooh, okay. There you go. Was that with your little uh, running group with Heather? No, I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> I just one of my girlfriends. Um, who doesn't want to sign up for the race, but she said she'll run alongside me for a while. So yeah, I wasn't sure how it was going to go because we had an impromptu pizza party at our house last night. And, uh, but we did it. I was supposed to, I was trying to do nine, but I was like, yeah, this is just fine. Yeah. Um, so, but it's really, really nice out. And so it's like one of those days where you get out there and you're like, I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm hot, I'm cold. Mm -hmm. You're like pulling up your sleeves and taking off your gloves. And then you turn a corner and you're in the shade and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah. it's, 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 this is the best time, I think, this time of year. So yeah. Oh yeah. Your race is in May also, right? Yeah. It's the day after Lauren's that um, uh, the Colfax is on the 15th. May 14th and May 15th. I got to write that down, ladies. And is it Joy's is tomorrow, right? Joy's is tomorrow. Yay. Yeah. Um, she, uh, I was writing all race dates down. Um, yeah, I was, when I was telling everybody that poor Joy, she's trained for this thing three times. This is her yeah. third time training for this half. <laughs> so she, we were even talking and she was like, I don't even know if I want to run this anymore at one point. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, you're going to change your mind once it like actually, you know, you know that it's real and it's actually happening and it's not going to get camped or pushed back again. So, yeah. so yeah, she's excited. I think I hope <laughs> at this point. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, yeah, she's in Philadelphia. She's running the a Philadelphia race. I don't think it's the Philadelphia half specifically, but she's going to Philly for it. Yeah. Ooh. I know. I love Philadelphia. I'm jealous. So if you were to do a Delta group run, did you have you picked some potential locations? I have looked into a few places. Um, <laughs> Lauren's uh, trip to Alaska, I don't know if y'all know this, she was just in Alaska, inspired me. So I was looking at some stuff in Alaska. <laughs> that could be really cool. Um, I also was looking, um, I found a race in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, it's like an Oktoberfest half um, that I thought could be fun. Um, and then I was looking at some other, I was trying to find some places that, you know, everybody, not that I want to make everybody travel, but that, you know, one person or one part of the team is like, oh, great. I, that's right in my backyard. Um, and then everybody else has to pay for a plane ticket or something. So, um, so yeah, I've been trying to 
trying to find some stuff. Those are the two that I was looking at. Um, also, cause I want to go to both of those places. <laughs> um, yeah. But the thing with both of those races that I found was that they only, uh, the one in Alaska is only a half. And then the one in, uh, no, the one in Asheville is only a half and the one in Alaska is only a half or a full. And I'm trying to find a race that also has like a 10 K or a five K in case some of the team wants to come, but is like, doesn't want to do a half or a full. Um, yeah. so the search continues. <laughs> Oh, fun, yeah, we will have a Delta retreat someday very soon. I promise everybody. Yeah. And since Marty's on, we need to plan the Delta backpacking trip. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. It's gonna be super fun. We've got a good stretch of PCT here. Yeah, that would be awesome. I've never been up that way, so. Neither. Mm. Oh, I'm itching for a backpacking trip, y'all. I'm ready for one. I'm ready. I just imagine Betsy on a backpacking trip. I don't, I don't know that she would come. <laughs> I love you, Betsy, if you're listening to this. <laughs> uh, Betsy would be in the hotel waiting for us. She would probably have a party ready for us when we got back. <laughs> Oh man. Just talking with a friend, uh, my friend that I ran with, she turns 50 this year and she had, um, her, her plan was to go to Italy to celebrate, but just with all of life and still like not being able to feel confident on the COVID stuff, she posted it again. Um, <clears throat> and so she said, I want to do like a girl's weekend in Manitou and do yeah. like the incline and then just like yeah. Uh, oh, Lauren, you know this. Too. Are there hot springs down there? Yeah, there are. I haven't okay. been, but people have talked about them. <laughs> that would be she, fun. So, but she's like, not all the all of my friends can do the incline, and I was like, well, they could either hike the the Bar you know trail. the up down trail, like we have to climb the stairs, but like have an al an alternate option if they didn't want to do. The and there's a halfway one. cutoff on on the incline, so they could go halfway. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. that's a good reminder I'll have to let her know that because that'd be easy to plan and just drive down but then she's like I feel like it's Manitou Hot Springs I was like I'm not sure <laughs> sounds right that would be that my husband and I are going camping next weekend which by the way everybody we're going to have a recording of the Monday run because I will be driving back from Big Bend um, this is everybody's first time hearing about that <laughs> Um, but, uh, but we're planning on hiking and then sitting in the hot springs and that's all we're going to do is easy hike, sit in the hot springs, easy hike, sit in the hot springs. That sounds awesome. Highly recommend. That sounds like a great trip though. I've always wanted to go do the incline. Good. It's one of my favorite. It's like the best, um, I don't know, 45 minute to one hour workout you can get. I think <laughs> like going up the incline. What is the incline? like a bunch of stairs but it it's like I don't know it's like, like three quarters of a mile up but you climb like over 2,000 feet in elevation in that distance it's beautiful you can't go back down that way can you people do they say not to I wouldn't do it because it sounds horrible on the knees um, uh-huh I've had trouble that. like when it, you sorry to interrupt go ahead continue Oh, no, I was just going to say, I've heard if you're going to kind of break the rules and go down, that you should go down backwards. And that's actually mm. like better on your knees and stuff. Yeah. I had trouble, like, when I would go up and, like, take a break. If I turned around and looked out, like, the fear of falling back down was yeah. so <laughs> intense. Like, I had to just lean into the hill. So, like, for a comfort thing, it was, it's no joke. <laughs> yeah. Marnie, the, the Manitou incline is like, like they said, it's, it's really, really steep. I've seen pictures of like looking down and it looks like a roller coaster, just like straight down and, and out. It, it is a little intimidating looking, <laughs> but it look, I'm like, oh, I need to do that. <laughs> it's fun. 
and it's so pretty because then on the way down it is like a really beautiful little trail hike and you can just relax and if you get when you get to the top then there's lots of places just to kind of sit have snack chill out enjoy the view and then move on I think yeah, like last time when we made it to the top, someone like pulled out their jet foil and was like making their coffee and all this stuff. At the top. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Wow. That nice. Oh, that is my favorite. That is my sister thinks I'm so goofy. Like when we go camping, backpacking, whatever it is, I will have a French press with me with real coffee. None of that instant coffee malarkey. Like, nope, I don't care how much it weighs. I will carry real coffee. I will carry enough water. I need my camp coffee. There's something about being in the outdoors with a hot cup of coffee, just like looking at the wilderness that just, oh, that is the best part of camping in my personal opinion. <laughs> John, aren't you the coffee connoisseur? Well, I was going to say a good compromise is, uh, I tried this last time I went camping, was taking some cold brew. And like a camp stove and warming that up. Oh, that's good. To it's pretty good. Mm. It doesn't have that gross instant taste. <laughs> yeah, food for thought. Food for thought. There's something about that, like fresh, just, mm. I'm a weirdo, but I'll do it. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'll have to try that next time. Yeah, my sister, we went camping and and she was like, uh, we went camping in a Rocky Mountain National Park a couple summers ago. And she was like, we went to REI to get some stuff. And I was asking her about the coffee. And she goes, oh, I just drink instant coffee when I camp. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> I like bought a brand new uh, like pour over thing <laughs> and all this other stuff. And her, her trying to convince me to uh, just drink the instant coffee. She was like, well, our grandfather used to drink instant coffee all the time when he camped. And I was like, who cares? I'm not grandpa. Like, I don't care. <laughs> she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I am bougie when I camp, but I don't care. I like my creature comforts, you know. Oh, so what's, what's the plan for the weekend? It's almost 10 o'clock here. Does anybody have any, any more any fun plans or anything? Talk to me. We're having our neighbors over for a cookout tonight. It's going to be 75 Ooh, here uh, today, which is amazing and warm. So uh, we're going to clean up right hot. Patio. What? I said that's downright hot. <laughs> yes, for you probably. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to enjoy this, the sunshine, clean up the yard and, and play outside for a little bit. Nice. That'll be really good. Marnie, what's the temperature like in Washington right now? Well, earlier this week, it hit 60 degrees and I was like dying. It's amazing. <laughs> wow. That's like cold to me. Back to this weather. <laughs> Yeah. John's wearing a beanie for Christ's sake. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little cool. It's warming up already. Also, I've got some really awful bed hair under here. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a bingo MC today. Oh, that sounds fun. Yes. Our church is doing a bingo afternoon. So Oh, nice. That sounds like a blast. I, I get to be calling the numbers. Oh, <laughs> oh you're, you're going to be practice, practice like, oh, 65. Like, exactly. MC. <laughs> Have we got a B10 out there, anybody? <laughs> oh, right here, right here. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Right. That'll be fun. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that's good. I'm doing well during the day I have school work to do and then but then tonight is like another birthday dinner I'm just doing like a full week of birthday celebration <laughs> well, happy birthday. Is it your birthday? what was it it's yeah. your birthday yeah it's on Monday oh. uh, 30th birthday oh the big three oh I'm excited 30 
Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, to be 30 again. I know. I was like, you're young, so young. <laughs> I know. I just keep telling everyone, I'm like, mid 30s is when you peak in running. So I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe it's even later maybe it's like late 30s early 40s because I feel like those are the competitive like brackets when you're looking at races and stuff mm -hmm. like those like the 35 to 40 and 40 to 45 and I mean everyone is like impressive but I feel like that's when everyone's really peaking in their running so the I mean peaking there. is relative Lauren look at Shalane <laughs> plan again everybody I, I I listened to um the flow track podcast if anybody wants to listen to a podcast about the track world highly recommend and the two guys who run the podcast after Shalane ran her uh like six marathon or seven whatever it was full marathons like back to back to back one guy was like she peaked years ago and the other guy was like well did she though because look at what she just did that's amazing mm -hmm. is this not another peak for her and so peaking is all relative just saying. Yes. Speaking of track, I will be at um, here in a couple hours. I will be at Texas Relays. If anybody knows what that is, um, I'm what very. Is that? Uh, it is. <clears throat> it's a very prestigious track meet, essentially. Um, I don't know if y'all have heard of like Penn Relays uh, at Pennsylvania University of Pennsylvania. It's as far as like track, the track world goes, those two track meets are like the best of the best of every level. You have to, you don't get to just go and run. You like most track meets you can find and just sign up for to go get a time. These track meets you have to qualify for. So it, this is like, this would be like equivalent to uh, like the Boston marathon or like the new york city marathon or the chicago marathon but for the track world so you're going to have the best of the best high schoolers you're going to have the best of the best college and then you're going to have pro athletes out there as well um so like gabby thomas is running the 200 um a few years ago my my husband and i go every year because we're track nerds um but a few years ago like the french pole vault team when at the time Renald uh, had the world record for the pole vault, he was there jumping. Um, Jen Sir also was a world record pole vault holder. She was there jumping. Um, it's like, it's an amazing meet to watch. Um, so I'm very excited and I'm going to be so sunburned on Monday. <laughs> oh, and my newest, my newest client that I'm training, um, she is a 800 meter runner in high school. Her four by eight team is competing. So I'm super excited to get to watch her run as well. So I'm pumped. John, what are you doing this weekend? We haven't heard from you. Oh yeah, no, uh, no, it was, it was funny. I was going to say, it. it's like, I've gone from like not knowing at all about the Texas Relays having lived here. And now it's like, oh, <laughs> finally, now that I know what's going on, I have an interest in it now. Yeah. Um, but. Um, it's actually really nice that we might go to the Zilker Botanical. Um, I went hiking earlier this week too there. So just really soaking up this weather before it gets too hot. Yes, for real. Yeah. I have always wanted to go to the Zilker Botanical Gardens. I can't believe you should go there. there and the um the ladybird. Oh, the wildflowers. Yeah. Uh, it's probably gonna be like wonderful right now since everything's blooming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. I might have to put that on my list later this week. Mm. This is why I ask, by the way, what are y'all doing this weekend? So I can get ideas for my weekend, too. <laughs> nice. Well, good, y'all. I'm glad that everybody's got good stuff planned. I like that. Well, it sounds like we're all going to go sign up for a triathlon now. Um... <laughs> Susan says no. <laughs> but Susan, are you... Are you running the Boulder Boulder? Have you talked about it a little bit? I'm not, um, but you're, you're more than welcome to come stay here. So you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn. Um, and I will come cheer you on. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to sign up okay. for that. Maybe I what should. 
Excellent. Did you sign up already? No, I'm about to, and I have some people from work that are gonna join as well. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know once they do, because we're like gonna pick the same wave. And I think once you once you signed up, you can actually pick like a specific participant, so they put you in the same. Oh, wave. that's nice. Yeah. How many of you are are signing up? Um, I think so far there's just four of us. So yeah, but one of the ladies, she. Um, she was either cross country or track in college. So like she can go on ahead. She's very <laughs> fast. <laughs> Part of that one is like, you just, it's so much fun that it's hard to like run it to like yeah. really run. Like there's, it's like you're, you're running through a parade almost yeah. like, cause the sidelines are just so crazy. The one yeah. year, um, my husband does not like to run and he went we went and did it together and like there was a trampoline thing that you could do and there was like a slip, slide. And, a slip and slide and there was the one part I remember so much was like we got split up somewhere and so I just kept going going trying to find them and I got to this one like party house and this guy had like this big bowl of Doritos and I was like yeah, yeah. and then I was like I can't put my hand in there. How many other crazy yeah. people have put their dirty, sweaty hands in there? And this is before like <laughs> sanitizers all over the place. I was like, no thanks. Buddy. <laughs> I'll take the popsicle instead. But yeah. it's, it's a blast. Mm -hmm. What's the distance on the Boulder Boulder? The 10K. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get to end in the football stadium and it's just everyone's in costumes and they're like passing out beers all along the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's not something you try and get a PR at. <laughs> it yeah. is definitely an experience for sure. Uh -huh. Belly dancers on the side and just, yeah, lots of That's fun. fun. I love races like that. Yeah. The running community is a fun community. Anybody who thinks otherwise has obviously never been a runner. <laughs> I think, I hope this year will be like, because they haven't had it in two years now that I bet it will be quite a spectac spectacular, yeah. spectacle, spectacle, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey. Oh, well, Lauren, you're going to have to send us lots of pictures. And Susan, if you end up running it too, send us lots of pictures because that sounds fun. Like, I mean, I know we'll be here. <laughs> Might as well. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, y'all, we, we, my husband and I should probably get ready to head out to the track because there are some preliminary events that we need to see. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that y'all all jumped on this morning. Thanks for chatting and hanging out. Um, I hope that, I always hope that y'all find these um, informative, but more so I just hope that y'all enjoy getting to know one another better and just talking and and hearing others experiences and and seeing Tristan pop on randomly while he's on his bike yeah well y'all um have a good rest of your Saturday and your weekend and yeah. um I'll be seeing everyone on Monday at some point I'm sure whether it's the morning or the afternoon and uh yeah thanks yeah. again for being here y'all have, have a good weekend, weekend everybody right, thanks take care bye bye y'all I hope that all you listeners got something out of that conversation as well whether it has to do with knowing when it's time to have a chill day or inspired you to sign up for a triathlon, whatever it was, I hope that you got something great out of it. If you enjoyed that episode, make sure to share it with a friend and give us a five-star rating on Spotify. Until next time, get out there and run like an athlete.